you're probably thinking, Isaac, what is your plan for today's stream? So I have got a couple of plans. You may remember at the end of the last stream, we set up this little area over here. We put down a bunch of dirt. We then turned all of that dirt into cursed earth. We put vector plates on top of the cursed earth. And so mobs would continuously spawn and be pushed towards the mob slaughtering factory, thus turning those mobs into pink slime and into meat. You can see already this portable tank full of meat. It's, just, it's full. It's full to the brim. I can't put any more in there, uh, which is also why no more pink slime is being transferred out because this tank is full. But uh, we do have an internal storage here, which is also holding um, an extra six buckets worth of pink slime, as well as however much is in here. I would guess like a bucket or two or maybe three. I'm not quite sure, actually. I still don't know how many tanks or how many buckets worth of fluid these tanks hold. I think it's either like eight or 16 or 14. I think it might be 16 or 20. I'm being told 20 by the Twitch chat, so I don't know. But anyway, um, you may notice I have a new sign from one of my moderators. Uh, Slaughterhouse causes mob drops is apparently the message. Ninja is one of the people who moderates our Discord server and also um, helps moderate the servers. And he did a little bit of like a sweep of all of the bases on the server to check which ones were causing the most lag. And uh, apparently, unbeknownst to me, the, uh, the mob slaughter factory here does indeed give a couple of mob drops. It doesn't give you the traditional mob drops. Like if you kill a creeper with the mob slaughter factory, it doesn't produce gunpowder, you know, and, and zombies rotten flesh and uh, skeletons bones. At least I don't think it does. But um, I did come on and see like a couple of loot banks on the floor here. And so I think certain mobs do still drop certain modded items if they're killed with the slot factory anyway long story short this thing's been off for a little while but i think that the uh like eight or nine buckets that we've got of the pink slime should be more than enough to do what i want to do in today's session which is get ourselves a couple of stoneworks factories so over here we set up our first stoneworks factory our material stoneworks factory which has been working away getting us some glass between sessions and what i would like to do in today's stream is i think i'm probably going to get rid of these storage drawers here initially the plan was to kind of mirror what we had on this side of the room you know have four different trees getting us four different types of wood samplings sticks leaves etc but i don't really think we're going to need that many different trees and that many different woods and so what i'm kind of thinking what we might do instead is put down four different stoneworks factories over here all outputting into different storage drawers like you know one for sand one for gravel one for stone and one for glass i'm thinking uh, we're constantly needing stone and glass to build sand and gravel are always useful for crafting like grout uh, for crafting the conduit binder for crafting uh all kinds of stuff essentially you get the idea and so i'm thinking we'll replace that there now the first problem that we run into when it comes to making multiple more stoneworks factories is the pink slime, which we have, but we also need plastic. And we did work a little bit on setting up kind of like a rudimentary plastic setup a little while ago, right? We got ourselves the latex processing unit. We made ourselves the tree fluid extractor. We can place down logs, extract the uh, the latex from those logs, and then send it through to the latex processing unit to make those tiny piles of rubber, which we can then craft and smelt. But we didn't automate it, right? And it was a little bit janky. It was kind of all thrown down over here. It was a bit of a mess. And what I want to do with today for the start of today's stream is fix it up a little bit, right? I want to set up an automated system that produces plastic. Once we've got that, we can make the stoneworks factories. Um, but once we've got those, we should be able to get like a nice automated system of uh, all of those blocks and whatnot up and running. Um, also, another thing that I would like to get done, um, and I think I will do at the start of the stream here, is I would like to start spawning animals right passive mobs we don't have any cows any peep uh, any sheep any pigs any chickens uh, specifically the last one there the chickens are quite important because there are quite a few mods in this pack i think we have maybe three or four mods that all uh, give you the ability to generate resources from chickens right we have roost we've got i think it might be one called like chickens or better chickens if we go to at chicken yeah we've got more chickens we've got chickens We've got at roost, this one here, roost. There are so many mods that give us the ability to generate resources from chickens, but to get into most of them, we need eggs, a lot of them, and we also need chickens, right, in general. We have to have the chickens uh, to be able to... Um, to get eggs, to get feathers, and to uh, to breed them into other chickens. Um, I don't want to get into chickens today, and we're not going to do any chicken work in today's stream. I just want to get this kind of uh, up and running so that we can actually get chickens, you know, so we actually have chickens, and then uh, maybe in the next stream we can start working towards uh, automating, you know, eggs and, and all that kind of good stuff. So um, I think, hmm, I'm not quite sure how I want to do this. I think I do want a bit more space than what we have right now. 
And so I will clear out just a little bit of extra space. I don't want to create too much space, though. I don't want mobs spawning uh, all over the place. I think we'll just, like, throw down a bit of grass here. It only has to be... Mm, I say only. It has to be, like, what, 24 blocks away for them to actually spawn from where you are? So if we assume I spend most of my time, like, here, that's, like, what, one, two... Three. Yeah, it should be far enough away. This is temporary. This grass here uh, is very temporary. Um, as is a lot of stuff. Actually, let me have seven real quick. Yeah. As is a lot of stuff in the base right now. Like, for example, you may notice that there is just a weird little nether brick system. And actually, in fact, I think we can get rid of this at this point. We don't necessarily need that anymore. We had it originally to make demon ingots. I always want to say demon steel. What is demon steel? Demon steel is from Aura Cascade, I want to say. What, um, but they're actually called dem demonic ingots, right? Also, that does, again, lead me to another point that I want to, uh, to mention. I've been getting some weird messages from my sword. Whenever I log in, my sword has been talking to me. I know that makes me sound insane, but my, um, my, my sword has been talking to me. If you're not in the Discord, discord.gg slash goc i posted a, uh, a screen cap of my sword talking to me in the in-game chat between streams <laughs> twitch just all right yeah okay isaac yeah whatever this guy's losing it he's losing it uh yeah don't worry about it it won't summon a demon or anything i'm a little bit worried about it chap to be honest i'm a little worried about it for one droid keeps talking about demons being spawned and for two it's got a bar like, in the top left there, whenever I go kill a mob... You know what, let me go to the nether real quick and kind of show you guys what I mean here. If I go to the nether, whenever I kill a mob with this sword, a little bar appears in the top left. And it... I don't know what it means. Uh, is it a bar or is it a number? It might be a number. Like, it's a very small number, I think. Like, maybe like not point... Ooh, please don't kill me. But I, I think I, I remember seeing... Yeah, look at that. It's like, it's hard to to see but there's like this something like it's even harder to see because i can't even read what it says behind the fact that there's like there's like three okay chat i'm angry right now there are three layers of text right here it's like time of day then beneath time of day it says like jetpack fuel and how much jetpack fuel we've got and then behind that it's got like f the the number like what <laughs> what is this there's too much text in the top left now i do not like it and there's i don't even know what it means. It's too much. Can't you move the UI? I think, maybe. I don't know how you do it, though. The katana has a damage boost with each hit. Mmm, that would make a lot more sense. So, like, the more mobs that I kind of kill... Is it, like, with each swing, or is it with each consecutive, like, hit on a mob? How does that work? Uh, the consecutive hit, the combo meter rises, and the more damage you get. Oh, okay. That seems somewhat useful. I don't know if we're going to be doing too much consecutive hitting for the most part like i don't think we're going to be doing a lot of mass mob killing that requires a lot of consecutive hitting but maybe i don't know maybe if we do like some farm grinding or something right i guess that would make it quite good for like beheading maybe you know if you want to get um with a skeleton heads for example you know you could always obviously you could there are other ways you could do it but if you want to do it with a sword you could maybe set up a uh a wither skeleton spawner or like an enderman spawn if you want enderman heads or really any mob, I guess. Um, have them push towards a point and then kill them repeatedly with the katana. And you get more powerful as time goes on. Um, Isaac, looking at the tool forge for the demonic ingots. Do they have whispering traits? Whispering traits? Chicken bear for faster chickens? Mm, that is something I was going to do, actually. Yeah, you make a good point. Let me see here. So if I put this whispering will occasionally whisper its will to you. So, I'm not crazy. Deals bonus damage to un, uh, undead enemies. Insatiable during combat, deal more and more damage, but also consume more and more durability. Mm. So as you attack more and more, it does get more and more powerful, but it also breaks faster and faster as time goes on. That's interesting. And then we've obviously got magically uh, modified and magically brittle. Has a random chance of breaking when it takes damage. Can be can break unbreakable tools. Ah, okay. 
Uh, what did people say just then? Chicken bait. Mm, of course. Okay, let's get some chicken bait going. Uh, for those who don't know, chicken bait is, uh, there are a bunch of different types of bait that you can get from X Compressor. Uh, these are just to make it easier in sky blocks and, and stone blocks, I guess, like this, uh, to get specific animals. For example, if you want to get chickens, you can use chicken bait, which is quite simply two seeds crafted together. We'll make a few of these, I guess. Um, although I don't know if we need quite that many. And if we just throw this down on the grass over here, I think there are like a certain number of criteria that have to be met in order for the chicken to actually take the bait. I think one of those is that it needs water. Yeah, there needs water in the area. I will go and get another bucket of water because I do not wish to take water away from my grid power just yet. Um, also, another thing to put on the mental note of uh, things to do. I do still need more grid power. Constantly needing more grid power. But for now, let's grab some water and let's just throw that down pretty much anywhere in this grass area over here. It should go ahead and uh, allow the chicken to spawn. It won't spawn instantly, but that seems fine. You are too close, the animal is scared away. Can I put down multiple baits? I think I can. The bait will work in this environment. Move out of the range. There are too many baits. It looks way too suspicious. Okay, so we'll leave two baits there, I guess. And then once some chicken spawns, we can maybe put down like um, more bait if we want to try and get even more chickens. But for now, that's fine. That should eventually uh, go ahead and spawn in some chickens for us. Whilst we wait for that to actually spawn chickens, let's get on to building these Stoneworks factories. And for that, we need to get the tree fluid extractor and the latex processing unit working. Now, I'm thinking here that what we're probably going to do is get ourselves something like a block placer. Now, I don't think it really matters which kind of block placer we use here. Does the one from Industrial Foregoing require power? I'm going to assume it does. I know the one... So, so the one from Open Blocks, and this one doesn't require power, and I have got one here in my inventory already. Uh, but if I just provide this with a single redstone signal, will that continually try and place down blocks? I'm going to test that real quick, so I have no idea whether or not that's true. The Actually Additions Placer? Mmm. That one is a little more expensive and might also do the job. Like if I do this, will that... Oh, it totally does. I'm just going to use this one. Because <laughs> this one's cheap and easy. So we've got the uh, the block placer here from Open Blocks, which is very cheap to make. Indeed. Uh, at least in comparison to uh, some of the other ones here. Like the... Uh, we've got Cyclic, we've got BC Builder. Um, is it just called a placer, the one from... Uh, yeah, this one here, the... Uh, Auto place of Actual Editions is also not very expensive, actually. It's one, it's actually incredibly cheap. It might even be cheaper than this one, now that I look at it, really. Um, it's one lapis, cobblestone, four redstone, and a coal, uh, or black quartz, even. So, probably about a similar price structure there, actually, all things considered. But anyway, I'm thinking if we do something like this, what we want to do is we want, we want to have a constant stream of wood in here, right? That wood will then be placed down automatically by the placer. The tree fluid extractor doesn't require power, but it will begin to then uh, suck all of the latex out of that log. Then, then comes the tricky part, because then we need to actually uh, get the fluid out of the tree fluid extractor into the latex processing unit. We also have to provide the latex processing unit with power, and then on top of that, we need to be able to get water into the latex processing unit, and after that, we have to take the product of the latex processing unit which is the tiny piles of rubber, craft those into normal rubber, smelt them into the plastic, and then put them back into the basic storage drawer here. And so there's quite a lot of stuff that needs to be done there in quite a small amount of space. And so I think to do that, I am going to work with a few more of the NRIO pipes and cables that we used for the first time in the last stream. Uh, these guys over here, the energy con... Uh, what did we use last time? Yeah, we used energy conduits, right? For uh, powering our igneous extruder. Conduits can do it all in one block. Exactly. That is my plan. That is my plan. So, I think here, first things first, let me grab some gravel. I think we're still a little low on sand, but actually, um, our Stoneworks factory kind of comes to the rescue here because we do indeed have a full stack of sand there ready to go. Um, we probably don't have any clay, which is something else that we should really look into uh, automating as soon as possible here. Okay, so this, this is working. Yeah, we need to get the, um, the conduits. So, over here should be good. We do indeed have three. Nice. So that's going to allow us to craft up our first fluid conduits. These guys right here, the pressurized fluid conduits. We'll take you. After those, we're also going to require... We're going to need basically all of the conduits here because we need the pressurized fluid conduits uh, to move the fluid. Uh, all we need to do here is right-click on this side, extract, 
right click on this side insert that should then begin to move all of the latex as long as we set this to active without signal that means that it will pull out without a redstone signal there we go all the latex be moved out into the latex processing unit after that we then need to get water over and into the latex processing unit as well now for that hmm that one could prove a little trickier honestly like we can use the lasers and i'm just thinking about where we're going to put the laser and whether or not i'm going to move this pressurized fluid conduit right and also can you have multiple liquids move through a pressurized fluid conduit no okay so the, re the reason that i am currently pondering this i'm thinking what we might do is do it like this obviously we could go from and actually i don't want this here i want this here and here um we could go through the bottom but what i also want to be able to do is pull out of the latex processing unit because of course the latex processing unit once we give it um water will begin producing those tiny piles of plastic but those are not our end goal right we still want to be able uh, to pull out of the latex processing unit and then into the one of these furnaces right so we can actually smelt the plastic up and then put it back into our basic storage drawer and so I'm thinking more something like this. Do we have any... Yeah, we should definitely have some energy conduits remaining from the last stream. We do. Good stuff. And then finally, let's see about making some item conduits real quick. I think we might have what it takes to make these. Honestly, did I make a, uh, a pulsating iron ingot at some point? I totally did. Nice. And then we'll go ahead and craft up a set of uh, item conduits here real quick. And essentially, what I'm thinking of doing here is... Use the energy conduits to transfer power right so we'll do this we'll do this and we'll do this you know maybe we'll put like a laser here or something so this thing uh, can actually receive the power and then transfer it to the latex processing unit um very quickly let me go and grab a fluid laser which i think we should have still one more left in here laser we don't that's fine i've got one standard energy laser relay right here quickly zap that into a fluid laser relay and then with that i'm thinking we put this on the back of this like so then I'm going to connect that up to the other fluid laser relay down here, right? Now, this at this point, it's going to become a little weird <laughs> in that uh, there's going to be a big old laser going across the room. But as people did point out in a previous stream, what we should be able to do is hide this laser because I definitely do not want to be able to see this laser. It looks a little ridiculous going across the room like this. So... Just make another sink uh, and slap it there. It's not like it's that expensive. I mean, it's not, but then I've got to make more lasers and it's just, it's unnecessary, I think. I think it's cheaper for us to make just a laser hiding modifier, like one of these things here. Um, it does mean we have to make another one of these coils, which we can almost do with a little bit of uh, gold. Like the sink is obviously, it's pretty cheap, but then we've got to make more lasers to get the sink to work, if you know what I mean. Like, I think it's going to be a lot easier just to hide the laser did i craft that no and these right here are just um coal in front of the atomic reconstructor a little ridiculous <laughs> they, they, just, they, don't look, they don't look great right the uh, the lasers they look okay um you may notice i've moved these lasers to the top for now i still don't know if i like this or not uh, but at least for now i've moved our power distribution to the top here um, and so like power is being received here from our setup over there with the arboreal extractors and then sent across and then like down to where it needs to go right as opposed to being just in the middle of the room but for now at least let me go ahead and make this laser hiding modifier you get four of them at a time which is quite nice we of course have no glass whatsoever thankfully again the material stoneworks factory to the rescue on that front there and then we just need to quickly change all of that black stained glass there for regular glass you have to use black stained glass no you do have to use black stained glass no wait except any block glass black oh yeah it does have to be black glass okay okay okay, okay. in that case hold on to your butt cheeks because we should have um some floral black powder lying around which should make this process hopefully a little easier. We don't need that much black dye, black glass. And then, did that work? Yeah, it totally did, nice. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, I've never used these, but I'm assuming I can just like right click on this 
and then maybe right click on the other one and it will hide the beam. Yeah, look at that, nice. So now that is still gonna transfer, I hope, but just not show the laser, right? So we'll still get water in here. It'll still continually be full of water, but it just won't transfer that water over there, which is quite nice. And we're gonna do the same thing with another laser here. Get another set real quick, which again, shouldn't be too bad. I know I'm gonna have to make another one of these coils here. Oh my goodness, we really need to get, like, I think that, I'm gonna put my bit bags away for now. Um, I think that like auto crafting really needs to be on my radar now, because like some of these crafts we do, we do so many times and so regularly that it would be so nice to just have these on tap. Like we've made so many of these coils just because we go through so many lasers. It's crazy. And I would definitely like to do this less if possible. Uh, but yeah, I'm just thinking we do something like this. It doesn't really matter where we put it, I don't think. And then just connect this up to this and then make sure that let's actually get the laser there. And then as before, just boop and boop. Excuse me. You should not be showing me a laser line, Kim. Uh, excuse me. It's fine. I'll, I'll fix that in the future for now. Let me see. So you should be receiving power, which it is. So we're getting the tiny bits of dry rubber. This is where the item conduits come into play, right? Because those tiny piles of dry rubber then need to be crafted into the larger pieces of rubber, right? And to do that, I'm thinking we make another analog crafter, just like we did for crafting all of our uh, compressed sand here, compressed dust even, into uh, standard dust. So let's see if we're getting ourselves an analog crafter. Nice and easy to make. One chest, one crafting table, one lever. Easy enough. Does he know about the other types of spectre coil? Mm, I do, I've seen them. Uh, they're only obtainable through loot bags, right? The other types, oh no, you can craft them. Huh. Really? They're just craftable like that? That's bizarre. You do need uh, spectre iron. I don't really want to make the spectre coils. Like I, I like setting up interesting Oh, I hope interesting forms of uh, power generation. Like I want to put some time into the power generation. I don't just want to throw down spectacles onto all of my machines, right? Um, so I probably won't be using those anytime soon, but for now, we're going to pull all of, so we'll put that down. So now we've got a fluid conduit, an energy conduit, and an item conduit all within one block. We're going to pull all of the tiny piles of rubber out of this machine. So we're going to extract on the green channel, active without signal. And then this one is going to be an insert on the green channel. So there's all the tiny bits of dry rubber. We then want to teach it to craft like, we're going to turn sticky on and spread items on so that it automatically spreads the items amongst all the slots, like so. Um, and then once that gets one in each slot, it's then going to go ahead and craft that up into the dry rubber, at which point we then want to pull that out of there and put it into a furnace. Now, the next problem of many that we're going to run into is the fact that we don't have an electric furnace, right? Like temporarily, I can make it work with this diamond, f maybe? I don't know how the input and outputs work on the diamond furnace, honestly. And so I might real quickly here actually just go ahead and make a redstone furnace just to make my life a little easier. And I think we've got most of this stuff already. We do, it's just a click, nice. And so I'm thinking instead what we'll do is we'll quickly replace this. It's not gonna be as fast as the diamond furnace, obviously, uh, but we're not really after speed here, we're after consistency. We just want it constantly making um, the plastic for us, right? So I'm just gonna throw this down like so. Once again, that does need power, but that should be easily doable um, in a second. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna set all of the sides here to nothing. We're gonna set the back to input and output. And then what I would like to do here is something along the lines of this, right? I don't want it connecting to the block placer. So I'm gonna set that to nothing, don't connect. This is gonna be extracts. Uh, again, on the green channel is fine for now. Active without signal. So that should pull all of the dry rubber out. If we set this to insert on the green channel, that's gonna go ahead and insert the dry rubber into there. Following that, we then need to go ahead and extract as well, because once it's actually smelted the dry rubber into plastic, we want to extract. Now, crucially, we're gonna extract on a different channel here, brown. Um, it's just the next one along. And then we're gonna send that up across and into the storage drop, right? Like this. So uh, this one over here, we're gonna insert on the brown line, like so, we don't wanna extract. Make sure this is set to extract without redstone signal, active without signal like that. And that should take 
the dry rubber, smelt into plastic, and then pull that plastic out and put it in this storage drawer over here. That is the idea, at least. Now we just gotta get power to our redstone furnace. For that, you know the drill. We can just throw down another laser right about there. I'm pretty sure this should work, I think. It seems to have worked every other time we've tried it. At uh, trans, like, over here, it, it looked like it worked. You know, the, the laser isn't touching. The, did I just throw that on the floor? Or is that spinning above? I think that's spinning above, right? But the laser doesn't touch the uh, the conduit, but it still works. Let me quickly check if it works over here. It totally does. Nice. Nice. So then we can not do that. We can do that. It's always good luck just to waste a little bit of uh, of black glass. Everyone knows that. It's just a common common Minecraft thing. Put that back down. Uh, quickly get some more conduit facades so we can cover up all of our stuff. And then we should be good to go, I think. I think we are good to go. So get rid of all this. Actually, it's probably just going to be faster if I do this in the floor. We'll make a few. How many do we need? Just two, I think. So many lasers everywhere. The lasers are cool, though, is the thing. I love it. Cover up. Cover up. Again, I'll try and fix that little laser glitch right there. I don't know why that one's showing. I feel like it shouldn't be. But we can make that hidden um, with the augments. And so once this is done smelting, which it is, I feel like that should be extracting now. Extract without redstone signal into the brown channel. Insert on the brown channel. Why are you not extracting? Like the back there is set to both an input and an output. Does that not work? I'll change this to always active. Really, that works? Is there a redstone signal here? There's a redstone signal, of course. Okay. <laughs> really? That like that passes up to there? Hmm. I feel like that shouldn't pass up to there, but there we go. It is indeed working nonetheless. And so uh, all we need to do now is just go and grab our seared bricks. So we should be able to cover everything up and make it look nice again. Slow clap. <laughs> oh, boy. Enable auto output. I don't think you can on the... Uh, on these furnaces, right? Oh yeah, there is auto output there. But it doesn't seem to matter anyway. I think you still need to pull out with those conduits. I don't think you can auto output into NYO conduits uh, just because of the way they're set up. Uh, but there we go. We have plastic being produced slowly but surely. Um, very sure, very slowly, but very surely. Is this uh, the latex? Probably needs the same thing doing maybe. Extracts, always active. Yeah, nice. And then is that making its way into here? It is. Cool. Okay, the system is working. We can cover that up. And on the outside, we've got this nice little setup, just like on this side, just a block producing a product. Nice. And so with that, we can go over and grab a bucket, which we already have, and we can start producing pink slime. Because the next thing I want to do, of course, with that plastic is start to try and get um, a couple more of those stoneworks factories so that we can automate some of our production here. So... I guess what we'll do, pick up some cobblestone, throw it down pretty much anywhere. That'll do. And then just start plopping these guys down. I guess we can get more, because again, I don't know how long it takes for these to spawn in. Sometimes it happens like almost instantaneously, and sometimes it's a little um, a little slow. Please give me cobblestone. Oh, I forget that this thing's always like out. Like the cobblestone auto pushes into here, which has a void upgrade on it, so there's never any cobblestone in this one. I guess, like, this makes sense, right? To do this. And are we out? We are. So this is a bit weird. I think you can pull out by doing, like... It's... Mm, hmm. I can't remember how you do this. There is a way to pull out of just... Is it right-click? It's right-click. You can, you can right-click while hovering over this with a bucket to pull out the pink slime, not the meat fluid. It's weak. So you right click on the block, it will pull out the meat fluid. Even if you take all of the meat liquid out, it will still not pull out the pink slime, annoyingly enough. I still do want to put more... Um, ooh, I forgot that we put looting on that. So we do get more pink slime balls uh, per pink slime, which is always nice. I, uh, I still do want to put more sharpness, some more nether quartz onto my katana. You know, we're not quite fully at the um, at the max yet. We've got more space to, uh, to add some more stuff. So that is definitely something I would like to do. All right, so that's three material stoneworks factories. Again, I'm just thinking probably just like put them down here. 
That's probably more thought into moving this one because this one will just spew items everywhere if we're not careful. Get out of here. Nice. So boom, boom, boom. Uh, these things, of course, do require power, but then we're just gonna put some storage drawers on top of them. I'm not gonna use the uh, basic storage drawer here because this one is a two by two. Uh, we just need a standard storage drawer, which I think is just called a draw. This guy right here, basic draw. I'm gonna make it, of course, out of uh, dark oak. I still do want to make custom drawers. Uh, that is also on my list of things to do. We'll probably do that pretty soon. Uh, but then just like stone, glass, gravel, and then this one, of course, will end up being sand at some point. Uh, give me some form of packing tip. And let's just get rid of you. Um, obviously, the system we've just set up, by the way, for plastic is not automated. Uh, there is one key flaw in the system that we just set up for making plastic, and that is that we are not automatically sending wood to the block placer. It will last a while, and it will produce a good amount of plastic because the, the, the wood lasts so long in... With the, the tree fluid extractor, you know, we've got 60 wood in there. Uh, but of course, that is not automated right there. I do want to automate that, maybe with some kind of uh, bonsai pot um, or something along those lines. Maybe just pulling the wood from one of our pre-existing drawers could work. But uh, that is something I need to bear in mind. Like, that's not fully automated, at least not just yet. Uh, do these auto-output, chat, level with me? Can like, can like Will these auto-output to the top? Or do I have to extract from the back and pull into the top? Use flat ones. These ones. Oh, these ones. Thinner than the thinnest of pancakes, small enough to fit between blocks? Really? How long have these been a thing? I've never seen these. That is cool. That's really cool, actually. I dig that a lot. Like being able to put a little block, a little item that transfers between blocks. That's super cool. They don't auto output. Uh, there's an add on to auto output. Output. Is there? From. Um I am being pushed again by another one. Get out of here. Do these grow, by the way, if you leave them? Like, will they get bigger? Like, how do you get the bigger slimes? They're slow. Um, I guess we could just... Mm, uh, what we could do, chat, is finally get around to using those translocators. I don't know if I ever... Like, we made these... A little while back. We didn't end up using them because I couldn't get them to work for the system that I wanted to use them for. But I think... Oh, no, we totally can't, can we? Because we, like this doesn't work, right? I really do wish it would. Like, they go whoop and, like, up and around and into there. Like, do a big old, like, half circle. But these don't work. So uh, this one is going to turn cobble into stone. So just directly into stone like that. Uh, and then we will extract, always active, insert, like so. Um, I then do want to do this, but I do want to disconnect these. Can I disconnect these with a normal wrench or do I need to get... Oh, I can. Nice. Get rid of those. Because again, we're just going to extract, always active, insert. Did I do this one right? Yeah, always active, insert. Nice. And then, again... Get rid of you. Get rid of you. I'll fix that. <laughs> That's going to go away when we break this, of course, right? So, extract. Always active. And insert. And then, so this one's going to make us stone. This one can make us, I guess, sand. So, cobble to gravel. Gravel to sand. Sand to glass. This one can make us just gravel. So, cobble to gravel and then out. And then, finally, this one here can make us just sand, right? Oh, you did rotate this one. There we go. Uh, yeah, this one will just make me sand. So, cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, sand to out. Nice, okay. Uh, we do... How much stuff is in here? Way too much <laughs> is the answer. Way too much stuff. Um, what I'm going to do, chat, real quick, at actually additions, I'm going to make one of the crate moving doohickeys. For those who don't know, you can put this in a storage crate, like so, and then when you break it, it will not drop its items all over the place. It will retain its contents. And thus, I can just hide this in here for later. Uh, by the way, if you have it set to make cobble to gravel and to, to sand to glass and put two by two draw 
On top, it will fill up all four things. Really? All right. I mean, we could do, <laughs> I guess. But like, this is fine. This is fine. I think it's also faster, right? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But this is fine. Give me output. Always active. And insert. Okay, that should be the end of that. That's all working. Uh, now, of course, we need power to transfer to uh, to this thing. Uh, we should probably just go ahead and use like leadstone flux ducts uh, in tandem with lasers here. As per usual, the lasers are a bit more expensive and thus it's not worth making four lasers. We can instead just make one laser and then transfer power using the leadstone flux ducts to the rest. Is that right? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Nice. So, boom. And then, again, I'm going to hope that that works. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Of course it doesn't, Isaac, because you have not connected the laser to any form of power yet. Maybe if you were to do this and then something a little bit like, for example, this, then maybe it would work. It would. Okay, so what I don't want to do here is output cobble. So if I do that, I'm pretty sure it will not output cobble anymore. It won't. It will. Why do you do this to me? Negatory. Do not output. Hmm. Hmm. It's pulling out the back? Oh, of course. Of course, you are correct. No. Don't do it. Now the gravel's gonna pull out the back, right? And this one's supposed to be what? It's supposed to be okay, 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 okay. I understand. Cobble to gravel, gravel to sand. You are you wanna be sand. You're a sand machine. You are a no, this is not you are a gravel machine. If I do if I just put gravel in there, will that prevent? Yeah. Yeah, that works. Like it's not the it's not an ideal solution. Ideally, I would do the you would toggle the bottom bits like I, I was just doing. But I guess like what you can also just do is just grab the items that you want to eventually be in the drawers and put those in there. So, like, this one is stone. That's going to output stone. This one is glass. It's going to output glass. And I think that's good to go. I think that's good to go. I will lock these drawers to make sure that we don't ever pull everything out of them. Right? Like, if I throw... Boop, 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 boop. If we lock those all up like so, that should mean that those don't end up putting anything else in there. Now you need speed upgrades. Well, I think now we need power, right? Like right now you'll see that we are not, that like, those are not getting enough power. And if I come over here, I feel like we're also maybe just out, like we're not producing enough. Yeah, we do just do not have enough power right now. We've got enough uh, tree oil and enough water. So really all we need to do now is upgrade our, well, we've got a few options. We can either upgrade our compression dynamos and make this system produce more power. Or what I think I'm more likely to do is start working on another source of power. Like, just start generating power in a different way. Um, I might upgrade these short term, but if we're going to, especially if we're going to set up a laser from um, industrial foregoing, you know, that generates all for us as well, that does also require, I think, like 400 redstone flux per tick um, from industrial foregoing. And so we are going to need more power in general. And so I feel like I might try using some different setups to make power. Like, I don't want to just, I mentioned it before, but I don't want to just expand this to be silly. You know, I, again, I want to make other hopefully interesting setups for power. Um, I'm thinking about using XNet to try and set up some cool stuff. Um, maybe with some different dynamos, some different fluids, maybe we'll see. But um, for now, I think this is fine. You know, we we'll, we'll might upgrade this a little bit to make it a bit better, because right now it produces like, what, 240 max? So I might upgrade these one more time and, and maybe upgrade to the other ones. But for the most part, I'm happy with uh, with how, that, how that's working out. Um, are you using leadstone energy ducts? I am, yeah. He's using everything. That's also true. Yeah, we are losing. <laughs> we are using leadstone energy conduits to transfer power from some of our lasers. So, like the lasers, we're using flux networks here, the flux point, to wirelessly transfer power from our main power source over here. That's where it's being pulled out to our main room. We're then using lasers from actual additions to transfer the power from the, the flux networks node to some of the machine key areas, like over there and then over here. And then we're using leadstone flux ducts to transfer power from those lasers to individual machines 
And then also, as a bit of a side note, I guess, we are also transferring uh, some power using energy conduits from Ender.io simply because of the fact that they hide quite nicely in the wall. Those are also coming from lasers as well. Anyway, I think, guys, that I am probably going to go ahead and call it there.